Welcome back to part four of the series on loops. In this video, we'll cover some miscellaneous issues and other loop control structures. Our first issue involves iteration variable scoping. In all of our previous examples, the variable that we used for iteration was declared before the loop. By declaring it outside of the loop, the scope of i implicitly extended after the loop as well. After this loop is done executing, i still exists and has a value of 11. Most modern programming languages, and in fact more recent versions of C, allow you to limit the scope of your iterator variable to the loop itself. This is done by using the following syntax, where the variable declaration is done inside the for loop's initialization statement. By using this syntax, the variable i does not exist beyond the loop. Any attempt to use it after the loop will be a compiler error. If you choose to use this modern style, you'll need to tell GCC to compile using the C99 standard in which it was adopted. You can do this using the std equals c99 flag, or you can use the shorthand c99 compiler instead of gcc altogether. I'll demonstrate. I'm on the CSE server. Here's the old style loop. And it compiles and runs without any issues. Let's change it so that it uses the more modern syntax. When I compile it with plain old GCC, it errors out, telling me that initialization declarations are only allowed in C99 mode. So let's do that now. and it compiles and runs without any issue. You can also use the shorthand C99 compiler itself. As you can see, because the scope is restricted to the loop itself, it's invalid, and so trying to use it after the loop is invalid. Recall that we can define Boolean flag variables to hold truth values. We can also use these flag variables with loop instead of using an inequality or other condition. This is most commonly done with while loops, where we declare a flag variable and use it in our while statement. Within our while loop, we would still need some logical statement to eventually update the flag variable to false so that we eventually break out of the loop. In fact, the keyword break is sometimes used to do this as well. The break statement immediately jumps to the end of the current loop or other control structure. A third type of loop is the do while loop. There's a big difference between the do while loop and the two others, however. The continuation condition is checked at the end of the loop instead of at the beginning. As a consequence, do while loops always execute at least once. Here's an example again printing values 1 to 10. Because a do while loop checks its continuation condition at the end, we have to increment i before we print it. We also have to initialize it to 0 and use a strict inequality comparison. Otherwise, we'd be off by 1 at either end of the loop. Note also the syntax. We use a semicolon at the end of the while statement. We'll mostly stick with for and while loops, but it's good to be familiar with do while loops in case you see them out in the wild. Another type of loop is a for each loop. Many programming languages support for each loops, which are typically used to iterate over collections such as arrays, sets, or lists. Unfortunately, for each loops are not supported in C, but plenty of languages do have them. So it's important to understand that they exist. You can also write loops within loops, this is called nesting or nested loops. It's very common when you iterate over two-dimensional data structures such as matrices or tables. You need a loop to iterate over each row. Then for each row, you need another loop to iterate over each column. Consider the following simple example. For each iteration of the outer for loop, an entire run of the inner for loop will occur. When i is 1, the inner loop executes j, running from 1 up to 10. Thus, it prints 2, 3, 4, up to 11, their sum. Then on the second iteration of the outer loop, i will be 2, and so the inner for loop again executes 10 times, printing 2, 4, 5, up to 12, again their sum. 
For each of the 10 iterations of the outer for loop, there will be 10 iterations of the inner for loop. So a grand total of 100 print statements will execute. Go ahead and try this code out for yourself to see how.